afternoon, so you can get that. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on recent updates to TCE and EDAC. Your microphone is going to stay muted throughout the presentation in order to avoid feedback. If you have questions, we will address them at the completion of the presentation using the Q&A feature of WebEx. You're welcome to type in your questions at any time, but we will wait to the end to address them. Our presenter today is Will Barlow. Will is an Applications Engineer for HBM based in the Detroit area. He spent 13 years in the automotive industry, performing a variety of vehicle testing, both in the field and in the simulation lab, before he came and joined us at HBM. Will, it's all yours. Thank you. And uh, good afternoon and welcome to uh, excuse me, I have a little difficulty here. Okay. Uh, good afternoon and oh, welcome to uh, today's webinar on EDAC and TCE updates. For those not, who are not familiar with the SOMAT EDAC, it's a system um, set that has uh, that set the standard for rugged uh, mobile acquisition. There are over 5,000 systems in use today in various industries. Its uh, modular design allows a user to configure the, the DAC system for various types of acquisitions uh, with layers like the ECOM, eBridge, which in turn gives the users the ability to collect various types of inputs like low-level signals, voltage, vehicle CAN, strain gauge, and so on and so forth. The EDAC has the ability to measure up to 96 analog channels per system. Net networking EDAC systems together gives the users the ability to record an infinite number of channels. Data can be recorded at sample rates up to 100,000 um, kilohertz. By interfacing SOMAT EDAC with uh, TCE um, test software, um, users have the ability to perform acquisitions using various data modes like time and burst histories, event triggering, rain flow, and peak value. The SOMA EDAC also has its own self-contained web browser. You can access this web browser using any computer without the need for TCE software. With this web browser, users have the ability to access the EDAC to perform functions such as review channels um, and, um, that are ready to be recorded, start and stop tests, review and download data. Since its creation, the SOMA EDAC has been through various design and function changes. Today we will focus on the changes um, that have been um, introduced since the eBridge layer and um, TCE version 3.10. Now for the hardware. The eBridge layer with the 16-bit resolution can simultaneously sample 16 channels of low-level differential analog inputs. The eBridge is an excellent choice for measuring transducers with low-level signals or string gauges. It has bipolar excitation capable of 5 to 10 volts. The eBridge can also measure quarter bridge, half bridge, and full bridge gauges. It has internal completion for quarter bridge string gauges of the 120 and 350 ohm variety and four chunk calibrators per channel for 50, 100, 200, and 500 ohm shunts. The eBridge also has the option of adding an analog out, out module that can output signals up to plus or minus 10 volts. Typically, output signals are used to supply a signal to some type of controller or such device. The ECOM layer is a five-port communication layer with three CAN ports, one vehicle bus port, and one GPS port. The CAN port, which is protocol 2B, has selectable baud rates from 41.6 kilobits per second to 1 megabit per second. Uh, it has the ability to power CAN-based transducers, such as the SOMAT CR, with 3 to 24 volts. You can log up to 254 CAN messages per port. Logging CAN messages have become very popular. You can now have the ability to log messages that once required users to install a physical transducer like a speed or brake sensor. 
Not only does this prevent you from spending time and money installing costly equipment, it frees the users from using additional analog channels in the EDAC. The vehicle port module has all the same advantages as a CAN port, but it also works with a wide, wide array of SOMAT vehicle bus modules. The additional SOMAT um, bus modules that can be um, used with the uh, vehicle bus port are uh, VPW, J1708, and KWP2000. The GPS port uses SOMAT GPS devices that come in 5 and 200 hertz models. The GPS use, used in conjunction with the EDAC can give users a number of GPS channels like altitude, latitude, and longitude during an acquisition. The types of channels you can get from your GPS will be dependent on the GPS model you have, such as our SOMAT 5 hertz and 200 hertz GPS. The 200 hertz GPS um, has, is a uh, 200 hertz GPS with a um, sorry, is a uh, update rate GPS based on speed sensors that interfaces and is powered with a GPS port of the ECOM layer. The eGPS 200 is a GPS receiver designed for non-contact speed measurements and professional vehicle testing applications such as braking, acceleration, and general vehicle dynamics. The eGPS 200 mod module combines data from GPS and inertial sensors to provide maximum reliability and accuracy even in areas with short um, interruption in GPS reception, which means even if your GPS is greatly interrupted, you will still be able to receive GPS data. The eGPS 200 is available in both a base model and a plus package. The base model provides 22 possible channels, including speed, absolute position, three axis instantaneous acceleration, number of satellites, and date and time information. The base model also includes an input trigger channel, which allows uh, synchronization of data values with external events such as brake pedal depression or passing an event marker. The GPS um, 200 with the plus package here um, provides all the channels of the base model plus uh, IMU, which is inertial measurement unit, and uh, RTK, which is real-time kinematic measurements. The IMU option um, involves acceleration accuracy, improves acceleration accuracy, and completes the six degrees of freedom measurement by adding axis rotation, roll pitch, and yaw. The real-time kinematic option uses readings from two GPS antennas to output high accuracy, yaw, pitch, and slip angle measurements. The GPS 200, eGPS 200 directly measures the yaw and pitch at any time, while slip angle calculations require the vehicle to be in motion. For more information, about, uh, you can visit our website at www.hbm.com and watch a webinar specifically on the eGPS 200. Next we have is the uh, SOMAT CR, which is a rugged mobile CAN-based temperature data acquisition module. Engineered to operate within temperature range of minus 40 degrees to 80 degrees C, with an IP67 protection class rating, the Compact CR module allows users to take temperature measurements directly as the most difficult test object. These modules can be placed um, in engine enclosures, air boxes, pumps, power generations, and many industrial applications. Its modular design reduces installation time, cabling, and test setup while lowering overall product testing costs. The SOMAT CR modules are compatible with any CAN um, 2.0B based system or vehicle networks that have a selectable baud rate from 20 kilo, kilo, kilobits per second um, to 1 megabit per second. The SOMAT CR modules are powered from a DC power source from, can be 
power from a DC power source from 10 to 36 volts. Once power is applied to the first module, it is distributed throughout the rest of the network through daisy chaining modules together. When interfacing with the SOMAT EDAC, a single SOMAT CR module can be powered directly from the ECOM, and hardware query self-recognizes the module in the system. The CR module is available in 16 channel configurations for K, J, or T-type thermocouples. Each channel has individual cold junction compensation fully isolated for up to 500 volts with an accuracy of plus or minus half a degree Celsius. Selectable sample rates are available for each channel from uh, 0 0.1 to 15 hertz. The SOMAT CR also has a digital and analog filter to remove high frequency signal components above 50 hertz and notches at 50 hertz and 60 hertz to prevent aliasing at power line frequency bands. Now that we've discussed some of the hardware, let's move on to some of the uh, TCE software updates. First of all, and, um, due to changes in the process of starting with version TCE uh, 3.10, all future development of firmware and TCE will, um, for the new EDAC, referred to as the EDAC Plus. So EDACs prior to the PLUS, now referred to as the EDAC classes, are not compatible with future TCE and firmware developments. Therefore, do not attempt to update your EDAC classic with any firmware or use TCE beyond version 3.9. In TCE version 3.11, SIE data formats is now supported. Acquiring data in an SIE data format has many advantages over um, SIF formats. The SIF format is limited to 4 gigabytes, which may be okay for most applications, but if you're acquiring data for long-term testing, this could li uh, limit the amount of data you're able to collect. The SIE format has no theoretical size limitation. Multiple SIE files can be stored on the EDAC at one time. This means you can store all your data on your EDAC until your testing is complete or until space on your EDAC is needed. It's, it's kind of like having a backup storage unit uh, for your data. With SIF, the previous data must be deleted when initializing a new test. And unlike the SIF format, the SIE files can be, can be written in a continuous string without modifying the earlier parts of the file. This append-only method has several benefits. One, files are readable while being written, whereas SIF requires a post-test run finalization step um, before they can be read. This is an especially great feature when acquiring data for long periods of time. If you've been running with your computer disconnected for a while, um, you're able to essentially connect back up to your EDAC uh, while your test is running um, uh, via uh, TCE of the web browser and review the data while it's still being collected. And because uh, SIE files um, don't require uh, internal pointers, file corruption is much less likely than in SIE formats. And recovery from any corruption um, does not occur, it, um, that does occur is a lot simpler. And also, uh, SIE allows optional uh, consistency check for all data, enabling any corruptions that are detected um, to be detected, actually, rather than um, just having them as uh, erroneous data. All SIE data on the EDAC is currently written with checksums. SIE files are self-describing, meaning that the binary format of the data stored on the SIE can be changed without modifying the file. And lastly, the SIE is, SIE is a flexible data format, and all future developments will be based on SIE format and not SIF. Starting in version 317, the default data mode will change from SIF to SIE. So to change, uh, to, change to the SIE format prior to, seven, to 317, you could go into your test ID and network setup 
And um, the pull down next to uh, data options changes that from SIF to SIE if you choose to record an SIE data format. Okay. In version TCE um, 311, uh, the baud rate transducer power and internal termination can now be set in the TC, uh, be set in the TCE com board. These settings are important if you're using uh, CAN transducers or want to acquire data from a vehicle bus. And I guess just on the side note, uh, CAN, CAN devices need some type of database um, to interpret the data that's streaming into the EDAT. To add this database, uh, you should open your web browser uh, from your EDAT, type in, the, uh, IP, what, uh, type in the IP address of your EDAT, and um, in the Systems tab, uh, go to uh, Explore EDAC Files. And from there, you would uh, make your way to your Vehicle Bus folder by going to your, uh, selecting your Users folder, then Setup folder, Databases, Vehicle Bus, then load your um, your database folder into the uh, appropriate uh, folder, whether you're using a if you're using a CAN transducer, you may you will load your file to the CAN folder, or if you're using a uh, one of the uh, other vehicle uh, bus modules, if you have a modified uh, database file for that, you can store it in that folder. Okay, now now let's get back to setting up the ecom layer. So in TCE, if you select um, hardware uh, setup, find your CAN layer that you want to modify and double click on that CAN layer. Then you'll, you'll pull up a dialog box. And when this dialog box appears, you can select hardware interface specifics, which will bring up another dialog box where you could change your baud rate, your transducer power, or enable internal completion. I mean, uh, internal termination. In TCE version 313, the EDAC firmware updater can now update all um, boards in one step versus having to individually update each layer. To accomplish this, you again open a, a browser page, type in your, uh, your EDAC IP address, then select the hardware tab below. From there, you would select the uh, update firmware for this EDAC. And so. And assuming that you have downloaded the latest version of uh, firmware from our website uh, and loaded it onto your computer, you would um, browse to that site, I mean to that location, and select the uh, and select the firmware. Um, select your firmware, and then if you want to automatically update all um, all layers that are installed on that EDAC, you would then click this button um, here for automatically update firmware for all effective hardware. Once that is complete, you can press the Begin Firmware Update Process button and follow the instructions. Okay, in TCE um, version 313, uh, TCE now supports entering millivolt per volt sensitivities for channel calibrations. Prior to this being added, if you had a transducer that had a millivolt per volt sensitivity, you would have to calculate a sensitivity based on this excitation. Now you can define it uh, in the pull down menu on, cal on the calibration table. Uh, Another uh, update for 313 was that the uh, EDAC manual was now included in TCE. So if you go up to the uh, the above toolbar and select Help, then you can select the EDAC manual. An update for 315 was that the uh, default working directory um, is moved um, to the to the My Documents or uh, Documents folder. This was done to accommodate uh, changes due to Windows 7. All right, uh, TCE 
E315 um, now supports video recording with select access cameras. Video recording could be a great addition to traditional data acquisition, especially when used in conjunction with uh, a GPS. To set up a video camera, to set up a video camera, it must be in the same IP um, range as your EDAC and laptop. If it is not, uh, refer to the camera's instructions on how to change its IP address. So once the IP address is correct, uh, you must connect the uh, EDAX ether line, the, uh, the access camera, and the computer to a uh, power over internet switch or a PoE switch. Once this is complete, then um, open the uh, EDAX web page, browser page, and select uh, manage uh, network cameras below. If you know the IP address of your camera, you can um, type it in in this field and then uh, select Add Cameras. If you do not know the IP address of your camera, but you know it's in the correct range, you can select Find Camera on Net Cameras on Network. And when this is selected, it, should, uh, it will find uh, whatever camera is on that network. Then you would uh, add you would select the camera to be added to your network. Then if you're ready to add it to your hardware, you would select the uh, update EDAC hardware list, and this will reset your EDAC, but then add the camera on also. To add video to your acquisition, you must add a message camera channel in your transducer and uh, channel setup. So if you select the Add button, then you would have to select the message camera a button from the, under the uh, pop-up um, box here. Once that is selected, then another dialog box will come up for the camera message uh, channel where you can select your ID, put in a description if you like, and if you want to make uh, modifications to that camera, uh, to the camera settings, then you would do so by uh, selecting the uh, message channel specifics button. This button will uh, give you the ability to change your pixel size, your compression ratio, and your uh, frame rate. So once that's all set up and you hit OK, then um, it will now add a camera channel to your um, transducer and message setup. To record the video, you must add it to a data mode. So um, in TCE, when you can, uh, if you go to the, your data mode uh, and select Add, then you have to select a, a message logger. From there, um, you can select your camera as your channel input, then select your ID and trigger, triggering options. And now you're ready to start recording data. So the next slide I'm going to show you an example of how video recording can be used in conjunction with uh, GPS and time history data. Uh, the data shown here was uh, processed uh, in HBM's ENCODE's Glyphworks software. At the bottom of the screen, you can see a uh, time history uh, chart or graph, and there's a, uh, appears to be a blue line, um, which is the, a cursory mark on the chart. From that mark, you can see, um, you can get GPS coordinates, uh, and in the Glyph, and using Glyphworks map module, you can locate exactly where you are. So if you can see the, the circle on the map here uh, shows exactly where, you, where you're where you at. And then um, there's a, a little box next to it that will give you your time, your latitude, and longitude. The, the video above also gives you a visualization, a visualization of your location at that time. Right. 
TCE317 has added in a power save mode option, which is accessible in the main processor board of the hardware setup. When this, uh, when this mode is enabled, the, TC, um, the EDAC will automatically enter a limited power savings mode when test runs are stopped and will automatically restore power before test runs are started again. This is a great feature to have, especially if you're going to be testing for long periods of time with limited access to power. To activate this option, double-click on the main processor board in hardware setup, then check the enable, enable power save mode in the dialog box here. The power save mode can also be added as a uh, computed channel that provides the capability to control it through a uh, logic input channel. To set it up, first you have to set up a logic channel in your um, hardware, your transducer and channel uh, message, which I have right here that's highlighted in blue. From there, you would open your uh, computed channels. Uh, uh, you will go to computed channels, select add, and from there, you would uh, select the type of channel you want to add, which would be your power save channel. And from there, you can um, provide a, uh, an ID, a description, um, the type and unit. And then for your input channel ID, uh, be sure that you pick to be correct, uh, your correct imp logic input channel from the pull down. The power save mode computer channel can now be added to a uh, data mode channel such as a time history. As you can see here, once you select, you can select a uh, data mode on the left side of the screen. And for instance, I selected time history. And from there, on the right side, when you can see the uh, time history data mode, that the uh, power save uh, channel is available uh, to be added um, to the time history. All right, today, uh, I only went over a few of the changes to the uh, EDAC uh, to the EDAC hardware and software over the past few releases. For a complete list of hardware available for the EDAC, please visit our website at www.hbm.com. For additional information on um, TCE updates, please refer to the release notes that are um, in every uh, TCE uh, software package. And these release notes can be located um, in Program Files, SOMAT, and um, TCE folder, whichever version you're using. And thank you for joining us today.